At common law, a landlord could terminate a periodic tenancy, such as a month-to-month -month lease, for any reason or no reason at all, by serving the tenant with a timely notice to quit. However, many states today have statutes that protect residential tenants from retaliatory evictions. In the 1988 case, Imperial Colliery Company v. Fout, the West Virginia Supreme Court of Appeals considered the defense of retaliatory eviction in a case involving a labor strike. Danny Fout worked as a coal miner for Milburn Colliery Company in West Virginia. In addition, Fout leased a small house trailer from Imperial Colliery Company. The two companies were interrelated, and mine workers considered them as a single entity. In June of 1983, Fout signed a written month-to-month -month lease with Imperial. Under the terms of the lease, Fout or Imperial could terminate the lease by giving one month's written notice. Moreover, an annual rent of $1 was to be paid in advance on January 1st of each year. Around February of 1986, Fout, along with other members of the United Mine Workers of America, participated in a labor strike against Milburn. Fout then received a certified letter in the mail from Imperial, advising him that his lease would be terminated at the end of March. After receiving the letter, Fout retained an attorney who advised Imperial that Fout wouldn't be able to vacate the property in a timely manner, due to family and money problems. Imperial then voluntarily agreed to a two-month extension of the lease. After the extension, Fout's attorney asked for another extension and sent a check for $1 but Imperial never responded. Subsequently, Imperial brought an eviction action against Fout in state magistrate court, which was later removed by Fout to state circuit court. In the action, Fout asserted retaliatory eviction as a defense, arguing that Imperial's eviction was brought in retaliation to his involvement in the labor strike against Milburn. Specifically, Fout argued that Imperial's retaliatory motive violated his First Amendment rights of speech and assembly and the National Labor Relations Act. Following discovery, Imperial moved for summary judgment, which the circuit court granted. In granting the motion, the court concluded that the defense of retaliatory eviction must derive from, or in some respect be related to, the tenant's rights as a tenant, which Fout admitted didn't exist. Fout appealed to the West Virginia Supreme Court of Appeals.